How to install the Classic X Click Suspended Metal Grid Sealing System. Before you begin, these are the tools you will need to complete the project. 4 foot level, tape measure, string and chalk line, speed square, screw gun, hammer, straight edge, magnetic level, utility knife, tin snips, and wire cutter. Ensure that the area is clutter free. Be aware some materials used in this project may be sharp. Determine room layout. Ensuring the room is balanced before you begin will result in a professional finished look. The ceiling tiles on opposite sides of the room should have the same dimensions. Using your room dimensions, follow the formulas on these sample worksheets to plan your balanced project and material estimate. Use this room balance formula to determine your border tile sizes and ensure a balanced room. This will also establish the location of your first main runner. Use this formula to establish a materials estimate list that will complete your project. The first step to installing your grid is establishing ceiling height. We recommend at least a 3 inch drop from the ceiling joist. This will allow for easy installation and removal of ceiling tiles later. At your desired ceiling height, mark a level line around the perimeter of the room. Using the appropriate fasteners, fasten the wall angle to wall studs every 16 inches on center. When making a corner with angle, you can butt them together or use a miter cut for a professional look. All outside corners will need to be miter cut. We recommend using 12 gauge hanger wire and fasteners. Run a chalk line parallel to the joists at the dimension of your border tile that we established earlier. This will be the location of your first main runner. Run additional chalk lines 4 feet on center from the first chalk line for additional main runners. Screw wire fasteners into joists along chalk line a maximum of 4 feet apart. Next, cut the hanger wire to the length of the distance of your fastener to the top of the wall angle plus 12 inches. Pre-bend the hanger wire 6 inches from the end. Insert the bent wire into the fastener and wrap it around itself 3 times. Continue this step for all remaining fastener locations. Now, place a screw or nail into the wall just above the molding in line with your hanging wires. You will need to do the same on the other side of the room. Remember to stay in line with your chalk line and hanging wires. Stretch a leveling string along the row of wires. Bend each hanger wire 90 degrees where it touches the leveling line. This will help keep the ceiling level when you install the main runners. Stretch additional leveling string lines to pre-bend other hanger wires and remove leveling strings after bending wires. The first main runner will need to be cut so that a cross T slot is precisely a border tile distance from the wall. This first main runner will be installed closest to the wall. Cut the top of the grid first with tin snips, then bend the grid open and cut the face. Place the cut end of the main runner on the wall molding and using the round hole in the grid, hang the main runner on the hanger wire. You will need to bend the wire up and wrap it around itself three times. If the holes don't line up, re-bend the hanger wire to align with the nearest hole. Use a level to make sure main runner is level. If not, adjust hanging wires accordingly. Repeat this step for the next main runner running parallel 4 feet away. Your first border tee will be positioned a border panel's distance away from the wall. If your main runner is cut correctly, there should be a rectangular slot at this location. 
To install the now cut cross tee, insert the uncut end of the cross tee into the main runner through the rectangular hole, using soft pressure until you hear or feel a click. Then rest the cut end of the tee on the wall molding. Before checking for squareness, you will need to install two four-foot cross tees between the two main runners in line with the first two border tees. When connecting two cross tees in the same rectangular hole in the main runner, insert the second tee into the slot by passing on the right side of the already installed cross tee. When you hear an audible click, you have a good connection. To achieve professional results, it's important to make sure the grid is square. This will allow you to make adjustments if necessary. One method is to use a speed square. Another option is to measure across the diagonal by the two foot by four foot opening. The measurement will be the same on both diagonals if the grid is square. If it is determined that it is not square, trim one of the main runners until the diagonals are equal. After you ensure your grid is square, complete the first two rows of main runners by hanging additional main runners from the hanger wires and joining their ends together. Listen for an audible click for a good connection. At the far end of these two rows, you'll need to cut both main runners so they rest on the wall molding. Now install all remaining main runners. You can use the leftover ends of the cut main runners to start new additional rows of main runners. Just ensure you have enough material so that a cross T slot will align with your existing cross T's. Install remaining cross T's. To lock grid in place and maintain squareness, attach a few cross T's to the wall angle with pop rivets or screws. Please note that some building codes require pop rivets on all border cross T's, so check your local building codes. Now install the rest of the cross tees, starting with the four foot cross tees running perpendicular to the main runners. Install these cross tees two feet apart to create a two foot by four foot opening. For two foot by two foot ceiling installation, install two foot cross tees at the midpoint of the four foot cross tees. After all cross tees are installed, use a level to ensure ceiling grid system is level adjust wires as needed. Removal of cross tees can be accomplished by pressing the locking tabs together with a pair of pliers and simply sliding the cross tee out of the main tee. To reinstall that cross tee, carefully re-bend the connector tab outward and install as before. Wash your hands or wear clean gloves before handling ceiling tiles as dirt from your hands is easily transferred to the tile. In most spaces, border tiles will need to be cut to proper dimensions. Use a straight edge and cut panels face up. After cutting, install as normal. Trim the edge border panels to the same dimensions as the flat panels. The tegular or reveal edge must now be cut into the panel. Use a sharp utility knife to cut halfway through the panel from the face side along the pencil line. Lay the utility knife on its side next to the panel and with the panel face side up, cut into the panel at the tegular edge height to the depth of the first cut. Discard the cut material. When installing, Place the cut edge facing the wall. Lift the panel at an angle up through the grid. Gently drop into place. Begin installation with border tiles and work your way to the center of the room. Shown here for a 2x2 ceiling layout is Genesis Icon Relief Waterproof Ceiling Tiles.